on behalf of the Rail Enthusiast Society, let me extend a very hearty welcome, a very warm welcome to all the 35 participants who have joined us so far, and I'm sure many more will join. Uh, a, a special we uh, welcome to our very illustrious uh, speaker today, Mr. Mani. I'm sure you will either, he is an outstanding speaker apart from his sort of professional knowledge. So all of us are really looking forward to this, uh, this session. I will now request Jail to kindly introduce the speaker who is already well known, but kindly do introduce him. And after that, uh, we look forward to this wonderful talk today. Thank you. Jay. Good morning, everyone. I'm sure Mr. Sudhanshu Mani does not need an introduction. Uh, but I will, I will <laughs> do the honors. He spent his entire lifetime in the railways. And to mention a fact which some may not know, his father was also in the railways. So he belongs to a railway family. And he started uh, working in the railways and retired as a general manager of ICF. While general manager of ICF, he also for a brief period looked after, I think, GM Southern Railway and also GM Southwestern Railway. And for a That's very right. brief period, as the director yes. general of NIR, the National Academy of Indian Railways. Uh, he has been DRM uh, Bangalore and ADRM Sikandrabad, apart from being an executive director in the RDSO. One of his most significant postings was as the advisor in the Indian embassy in Germany. The advisor there is at the level of a minister in the, in the embassy. So he has a very illustrious career going in, um, in covering a vast field, far more than the railways. So I will not spend more time introducing him. Over to you, Mr. Mani. Thanks a lot. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Thanks a lot, Mr. Jail yes. Singh and Mr. Mathur for affording me this opportunity to speak, uh, speak on a subject which has been absolutely close to my heart all my service life. I will just share my screen now and uh, hope it works. Uh, so, uh, it, it, this must be on the full screen now. Yes. Yes, sir. So, as I said, I'll be speaking about the diesels of Indian Railways. Uh, this is just a test slide. I hope it moved. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Good, good. Okay. So, friends, I come to you as a diesel man, or rather a man of diesels. Uh, somebody needs to go on mute. Uh, yeah. So, as I say about Indian Railways, so it is about diesels that you may love it or hate it. But in the context of Indian Railways so far, you cannot ignore it. James S. Miller has famously said that if you understand the physics of a locomotive, of how a locomotive works, that knowledge is irreplaceable. I would like to say, if the love of diesels throbs in your heart, that passion is undoubtedly irreplaceable. As I have this caveat in every talk, I'm not a, such a good speaker, so I do draw a law from the superior intelligence down the ages. Uh, somebody needs to go on mute. Somebody needs to go on mute. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I do borrow a lot from wisdom down the ages. My poet uncles, I, I call them. We are all rail women or rail fan, fans, so all of us have an inherent right to derail. I will attempt some humor. Fortunately for you, there is a time regime, so I cannot go long and winding. Before I get into the heart of the diesels, which I wish to do today, I will spend five, seven minutes of certain anecdotes which uh, would kind of define the way Sudhanshu Mani, the diesel man, was made. My first footplate, Bandel to Azim Ganj, when I 
when i climbed the locomotive the inspector there asked that you would perhaps be going to katwa which is which was like about 3 and a half 4 hours away i said no i have been told to go to azim ganj he said okay it was may 12 o'clock and he said welcome to the world of steam foot plate and as we got talking in that heat he asked me beware of the inspectors he himself was an inspector i said why sir did you think these 8 hours that you are on that steam foot plate if you love, if you wish to relieve yourself what would you do i said i didn't think about it what do you do so he told me something or whatever it did but he said i am you are lucky that i am your inspector because other inspectors in this division as you see on the left of your screen would yeah. open up their pocket and say ki saab bahar kahan jaate hain yahan pe aa jaiye and then i learned on that foot plate and then i learned on that foot plate of the what is perhaps not there on indian railways much the two aspect lower quadrant signaling and later when i was in sikandrabad as adrm the language of stop attention caution st- uh, proceed was something i learned later what i learned here was ek tho and do tho and that was the warner signal for you one green or two greens and then i also learned in that blistering heat of what paper line clear meant then on sticks all over the journey people would be there with a uh, 2 rupee currency note stuck on the stick such that the driver could catch it and throw some coal at them of course he could not but he could not have warned them not to be there with that paper line clear and i also learned what was okay register the okay register i also called it okay register was actually the signal defect register on which traditionally for last 3 years all that was recorded by all the drivers was okay i will close about this steam journey with my best foot plate of the life of my life on gaur express with gani khan choudhry was the railway minister and he had started this train gaur express from sialda i think to malda and it was on steam traction from bardwan the protocols were thrown out of the window and ame was a de rigueur on the foot plate the protocol did not demand it but i was there and as we were returning from malda 10 minutes before khana khana to bardwan if you know is on the main line and not on the rampur hard branch line and we found that we were about 12 minutes late and the train had to reach bardwan in time those days additional firemen were introduced on steam locomotives and the kind of vigorous firing that i saw for the next 15 20 minutes is something that is imprinted in my mind forever the speedometer did not show it because it stopped at 105 but the way we accelerated after that on that khana bardwan main line very good track was 115 km on a wp and that foot plate is something i never forgot as ame those four wheeler saloons omelet and tea on the foot plate and that wonderful crude but wonderful food in running rooms and accident relief trains this is what started making me the man i became but unfortunately something called coal dispute cropped up and coal dispute was nothing but a fight between the coal checker and the driver as to what was the balance coal on the tender did it have enough on the tender for the driver to sell on the way and not be punished because we used to have a bunch of charge sheets every day where causing pecuniary loss to railways so much had to be consumed so much has been consumed one ton extra deduct the price of one ton from his salaries and it went unprotested we thought we were punishing these drivers they had already factored that in and this kind of culture had cropped in unfortunately and that was how 
steam sheds on steam locomotive traction towards the end behave. One last instance, I remember these steam trains, uh, especially used to locos, used to fail quite a lot. And if you were in the train, in that ready four-wheeler, you would immediately be identified and the Bengal passengers, you know how violent they can be and they would immediately come to the saloon. It happened a couple of times with me, fortunately, in a place where it had a loco shed. And I could speak some broken Bangla, so I told them, no use cursing me. The shed is nearby. Let's go to the shed and find out why the locomotive has not come. And they uh, could believe my rules. And the moment we enter the shed, a lot of staff who were forewarned would come with their, what they used to call body, body lohan rod leke. And by the time 15, 20 of them came, no more discussion about the train running late and all the passengers would vanish. Then came diesels and my only... I was Amy Parr, so all I needed, I knew about diesels was that foot plate, go and sit on the assistant driver's seat, have tea at every stop in that small Bengali cooler. Once I had to go to Rampur Hart, and the best train to go there was Kanchanjanga Express, which unfortunately left Howla and then stopped only at Malda. Rampur Hart was where I had to go, so I go to the foot plate. The inspector tells the driver, Hey, Mishad, the Rampur Hart is The driver protested. He said, He says, Hey, Mishad, what is the name of the Mishad? The Mishad is the name of the Mishad. Wherever Hey, Mishad will get down, the train will stop there. And that's what happened. The train was slowed down on Rampur Hart platform. Hey, Mishad jumped. I didn't stop, but it was perhaps at 5 or 10 kilometers and made my way quite happy, having reached there in a much shorter time than any other train would have taken. And next day, I was in papers. Because Rampur Hart had a demand to stop that train there and it was being not being met by railways. And they said that this Amy fellow can uh, stop here and get down, but public cannot. So I was given a big mouthful by first the DME and then the DRM. So, this is the power of 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 the the father in law came, found out that the cabin man is not going to be able to the power of 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 फिर उन्होंने हरा किया ट्रेन चली गई उसके 5 मिनट बाद स्टेशन मास्टर आया उसने दो कंटा अपना रख खींच के केबिन बैन को कि साले राजधानी रोक दी तो वो जो फादर वुड भी फादर इन लॉ बोलते भाई ये क्या हुआ अभी पावर बोले भाई ये तो अपने अपने पावर की बात आई वुड ब्रीफली गो इनटू माय इंट्रोडक्शन टू डीजल शेड्स फर्स्ट पोस्टिंग एज डीएमए डीजल बर्दवान इन चार्ज ऑफ द शेड ऑफ कोर्स द इंटर डीजल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वाज हेडेड बाय अ सीनियर डीएमए मिस्टर एचसी जोशी आई थिंक इज प्रेजेंट हियर बट द शेड इन चार्ज आई वाज देयर एज अ शेड इन चार्ज विद जीरो नॉलेज ऑफ डीजल्स आई रिमेंबर इन वन ऑफ माय आई डोंट नो इफ मिस्टर वाईबी शर्मा इज हियर बट ही टुक अ क्लास uh, he, I took, did a course on uh, E-type excitation and he told me, we were talking about scales, the radiators and the cooling water system deposit scales, particular to an area. Logo goes all over. So it's like a bouquet of scale which deposits on the pipes. And that makes heat transfer so difficult and you get hot engine and so on. So he said, don't try it, but I had a solution. Take out old radiators, take out all the uh, and uh, and dismantle it, cut out the tubes, test in your lab as to which acid works the best to remove these scales. And then flush the locomotive cooling system with that light solution of that uh, acid. He said, but don't try it. I, of course, went and tried it. And I found certain acid worked well. So in all our locomotives, we put something which was unthinkable because there are a lot of rubber components there. Some 3% uh, solution and whatever, it gave me a lot of confidence because the cases of hot engine 
actually reduced. There was a terminology called when the throttle did not respond in Eastern Railway, you called it power not getting. So I had an Anglo CMP diesel. Every morning, one Bardwan loco or the other would go power not getting. So he called me, he said, You money, you call yourself a man, what kind of hijra locos you run that all every time you get power not getting. And when I was interviewing these diesel locomotives, I would always ask the driver, if power not getting, hoga to kya karoge? And aadhe nahi bata paate the, wo DMR, DMR kuch bolte the. Mujhe yaad hai ek driver, chandan lagaye hoye tha, bahut usko sawal puchha, uska to haath jod ke bola ki saab train start karte, Shankar Bhagwan ka naam lete hain. Aaj tak koi locomotive mera fail nahi hua. Ye power not getting mere saath hoga nahi, baaki DMR, DMR mein nahi jaata. I think I've taken too much time on these anecdotes, so I'll try to go ahead with the talk. Is the demise near? Well, almost. Cranky, loud and obnoxious locomotive, which wants to let everyone know what it for, what, what's there on its mind. But soon to come the silence when he no longer passes through. Everyone would wish they could see him again, wanting to know what he had to say. Can we get rid of so many diesels? Well, as Oscar Wilde has said, as for believing things, I can believe anything, provided it is quite incredible. Incredible it is. So believe it, we have to. But for those who love diesels, for those who love diesels and like diesels, time is eternal. I say it's Shakespeare because it's attributed to Shakespeare, but it is apocryphal. Before I begin my whatever I have to say about diesels, I must acknowledge the people who helped me through my career, those who worked below me and those who worked above me, my bosses. I start with Mr. Joshi. I came from that uh, Azim Bench type of footplate with no idea of diesels. So he was my guru in nitty gritty of diesels. And I learned how to analyze failures, little failures, and how to rectify them on your own through modifications if it's repetitive in nature. Anirvan Datta, I don't know if he's here, but he was the AME and we were uh, comrades together to tackle Mr. Joshi. And I would call him the boy who loved diesels. Then later, of course, after in Bardwan, Andal, and Jamalpur workshops dealing with diesels, earlier steam and then diesels, I landed in RDSO where Mr. H. N. Lal was the ED motor power who afforded me a lot of peaceful time to really go through the files and we'll go through the literature to really learn about diesels in a, from the design standpoint. There I met Mr. Harish Gupta, who was director of local design. An amazing designer, and in everyday discussion, he would open his. If you said something about diesel or a local design, he would open his pocketbook and he could design an entire locomotive in that pocketbook. Soon, Mr. N.C. Sina joined as the executive director, and he was the visionary who introduced the P and the G in diesel traction because earlier it used to be only S. Or M. He was uh, later replaced by Mr. P. Bhattacharya, and he trusted me a lot. By that time, I had also learned things. And again, EDNP and later CME DLW, Mr. A.K. Samalka, uh, the, perhaps the most wonderful boss to have, strong, but one, one with whom one could argue. Shubranshu is here. He was. Uh, the GM Loco man in DLW and later DED me traction. Very progressive and a lot of positive things we could do with him. Anil Kumar, I hope he's here, was the deputy CD in DLW and later director LD when I was ED motor power. Was a design whiz kid. And one, I say, a dismissive engineer because he was not only brilliant and perhaps one of the few engineers whom I've met in railways would also make sure 
to dismiss yeah. your non engineering non engineering narrative vivek kumar who was also a director and with him i we solved many ticklish issue, issues vivek khare was the unfortunate one worked very hard but he when i was the ed he was the director of the job that i used to do as a director and that was his uh, problem i guess but he somehow survived a pompous boss like me and not directly in design but mr dashrathi as ed me traction as amme as member mechanical mr sanjeev handa in similar roles mr shakil ahmed as ed me traction provided great support right from those days those my days in rdso up to 2010 i special thanks to brahmane and sushil kumar of rdso who provided me the photographs my story would mainly be about broad gauge diesel locomotives because that's the time uh, time permitting that's all we could perhaps cover with some justification not even bg dmu or mg locomotives and so on so what you see here is not something of great interest to me but for sake of continuity i have stolen things from here and there and put it up for you i'll not speak about it but this is how the diesel journey on indian railways began about wd ds4 when it was its new avatar the wds 4d came i remember as i was the deputy cme of uh, poh workshop diesel poh workshop in jamalpur i remember riding on this locomotive because it had that beautiful uh, uh, it had that seamless kind of uh, uh, throttle where you could take it from forward to reverse and the locomotive would go on its own stop and start moving back that's a, that's a good memory i have of this pappu locomotive otherwise i have not had much to do with this so i'll not spend more time here again for sake of history and legacy i have put them all together here hope they are, this is of some use wds5 and wds8 two again failed experiments but part of the history and part of legacy again i'll not talk much about them except that wds5 actually became some kind of a first in diesel electric locomotives and first time a dl apart from alco that dlw built some locomotives wds6 of course I say WDS seven was lost in the dustbin of annals of uh, diesel history. I don't even sure whether I'm not even sure whether this designation was actually given to this locomotive. But various combinations were tried in it. It was always a six cylinder engine with a lot of ballast. So the weight was one twenty six ton because ballasting a locomotive was the surest way of getting higher. Active effort because the coefficient of addition remaining same without much improvement. Subsequently, variations like, of course, making it complete air brake, fitting it with higher high addition unidirectional bogey to improve its its addition was also tried out, and microprocessor controls were also fitted in some locomotives. now i am also mixed up about these various designations but the improvements which start which came which we will talk about in wdm 2s also were tried out on this locomotive to my guess about 7 800 were built built totally perhaps some more for uh, private uh, organizations and psus but they did serve a very very important purpose as for heavy duty shunting and industrial pilots as industrial piloting became little scarce uh, in the way of uh, working on on indian railways these locos also started losing their uh, usp and were reduced to minor shunting that's about wds6 when i said both the bogies the high addition and the alco tri mount ride on this locomotive 
I could not get pictures of the locomotive. I get the, they were definitely made. Here it says WDS-7. I'm sure they were called WDS-6 something. But it, this was all done when uh, most of when mostly when I was EDMP, some of it when I was director. It was a continuum of sorts. The real broad gauge story actually begins with what you see on the screen. When we had this beast called WDM1. It was a full-bodied locomotive with 12-cylinder Alco engine and DC DC electrics, of course. And uh, what I still wonder about this locomotive, I never maintained them, but when I was in Bardwan, these locos were uh, based in Patratu. Mr. Joshi has maintained a lot of them. I always used to wonder when it goes to the side, then it's okay. train is running. How does the driver run it? I don't understand it yet. Of course, there were turntables, believe it or not, to turn this beast for uh, making it uh, face the right way. Before I go to WDM2, there was a locomotive called WDM3. Some eight, nine of them were procured. It was Henschel. Why I particularly bring it up? Because it was a Bobo locomotive with a bogey, which helped us design another bogey, another Bobo bogey later. But the locomotive was not a success, good or bad. The story was that it ended with this eight they were procured. And of course, special word for WDM4, the debate still rages that at the stage of getting technology, whether we did well to get WDM2 or WDM4, Alco or EMD, that debate is meaningless now. But this locomotive was the front runner as far as higher speeds were concerned on Indian railways. Whatever RDSO designs came in WAP series, WDP series, were all the fountainhead for that was this locomotive. This had that plexi coil bogey, and usi ko aage piche karke we have designed so many of those bogies generally. Yeah. Yeah. Modifications here and there. Yeah. And this was obviously the star locomotive, which was a natural choice when Rajdhani started. So beginning of Rajdhani is also same, is also started because of WDM fours and higher speeds on Indian roads. Then, of course, we come to what we all call the Indian Railways workhorse. If Indian Railways is the lifeline of the nation, as we say, then for a very long period from 60s, right up right into 90s, the pulse and the breath of this lifeline was WDM2. Built by Alco, and later by DLW, 16 cylinder with DC DC electrics. Thousands have been built. I don't even know the exact number. They were all mostly, uh, unless they were condemned, were upgraded to 3100 horsepower. And the last one was built in 1998, if I have got the year correctly. Speaking anything about this locomotive has to come from the heart. And if it has to come from the heart, it can only come through a poet. So I'll, I'll seek your intelligence and I'll translate some of the tougher words and you will appreciate the spirit here. Ghaiz means fury. Ghaiz ke alam mein moh se aag barsata hua Rengta murta pachalta Dil milata haasta Apne dil ki atish pinha Pinha means hidden, atish flame अपने दिल की आतिश पिन्हा को भड़काता हुआ खुद बखुद रूठता फरता बिखरा हुआ शोरे पहम कंटिन्यूअस क्लैमर कंटिन्यूअस साउंड शोरे पहम से दिले गीति को धड़काता हुआ पुल पे दरिया के दमादम कौंधता ललकारता अपनी इस तूफान अंगेजी Tufan Angezi is like a brewing a storm. Apni is Tufan Angezi pe itrata hua. Pesh karta beach naddi me charaga ka sama. Sahilo par reth ke zarro ko chamkata hua. 
मुंह में घुसता है सुरंगों के यकायक तोड़कर दंदनाता चीखता चिघाड़ता गाता हुआ आगे आगे जुस्त जू आमेज जुस्त जू आमेज मीन क्यूरियोसिटी द इंट्रीग आगे आगे जुस्त जू आमेज नजरें डालता दैट टेल्स यू द स्टोरी ऑफ दिस लोकोमोटिव विच if i would say if i would can quote from julius caesar the straddled indian railways like a colossus well from 60s up to early 90s the locomotives was modified in ribs and tabs pure air brake version was made it used to have static type excitation with large fault type components with an alternator an indigenous effort copying the e type excitation developed in us in late 50s and early 60s was given to ecil and later later bhcl and it was a very good develop very good indigenous effort where the e type excitation was born and the locomotive started getting uh, converted to e type excitation if i'm not wrong in some time in late 70s or so in 80s the alternator combination not ac dc was also tried out and some 70 80s locos were built but there were so many failures that unfortunately this project was given up in 80s 10 locomotives were 10 ac dc equipment were imported from canadian ge the bombardier name those days and they had performed excellently till early 2000s i would remember that all those alternators were still in service without a failure or maybe 9 out of 10 one because of some other reason not because of failure and the spirit of ac dc that we tried in our locomotives was based on this canadian ge experiment for side for uh, siding the creep a very low speed movement 2 3 kilometers uh for loading and loading of wagons and uh, tiplers and uh, not really tiplers but other other loading and load and loading systems was developed in 80s what was also developed was the fuel efficient kit which comprised of many components change of turbocharger one of the major thing pistons i think the fuel pump also and so many and that also helped us upgrade the locomotive later but it it brought down the uh sfc if i remember correctly from something like 165 grams per per uh, bhpr to about 154 grams per bhpr or so which was like a 7 8% improvement in fuel efficiency and then what i would call the joshi money modifications now this joshi money modifications represent not just joshi and money but these were innumerable modifications small modifications in circuits in mechanical components one screw there one nut there one stopper here which were tried out by all diesel sheds and there used to be a competition with sheds like eroding uh, erode uh, and guti scoring high marks but everyone had something or the other to share in what was the dmg and so on and we also did a lot this is what i learned a lot from mr joshi those days and that's why i call it for any uh, because of any other name at joshi money modifications which were not readily accepted by rdso hide bound as they were about certain design issues but proof of the pending and i'll just drop in a word here we'll be talking about it but because we had so many locomotives to follow wdm2 but emd family and now the g ask anyone in the field the g failures don't matter because it's all built in the contract they are allowed a certain level of failures and uh, it is maintained by them but even today because of these joshi money modifications which represent the ingenuity of the indian railway diesel engineers diesel senior subordinates all over india that the reliability of alco locos was never surpassed by either emd or the g locomotive of today
So the fuel efficient kit was tested in ED and silently they also tested it with an upgraded horsepower. <coughs> the higher compression ratios and all, I'll not get into the nitty gritty. But I'm told uh, because the tender was of 4000 HP was lying in the limbo, this was not encouraged that much. 3100 horsepower had been achieved. At some stage, when we realized that the 4000 horsepower, it may or may not come, but should not stop our indigenous effort. I, had, I was already in RDSO. A decision was taken to upgrade WDM2s to 3100 horsepower somewhere around 1993. A big challenge apart from the engine and the locomotive design was because the electric equipment had to be necessarily changed to alternator type AC DC because the DC generator would not be able to handle 3100 horsepower, not precisely the horsepower, it's more to do with the current limit and the voltage limit of the machine. You see, the diesel electrical machines never, vol never work at their optimum. When we have high voltage, we have low current, and then we have high current, we have low voltage. So if it's rated for X on a diesel locomotive, it works at 0.7 X, just a rough number. So the challenge was to call back those AC-DC systems and fit them in 3100 horsepower. It became a necessity. A lot of people wanted, why do you want to go back to that failed system? So I was looking after electrical machines and there was a book called Andrews. I never was a much of a reader, but I read it and I had to prove through calculations that given the size we could afford, a DC generator is not going to give us the power and the speed that we want in this locomotive. The motor could. So this locomotive was born. The rail fans called it Baldy because I don't know the reason. It must be something to do with its front, with Mr. Harish Gupta design to make it some kind of a quasi aerodynamic profile. But uh, DLW called it Gajraj. It had immense problems, electric, mechanical, and so on. And, and uh, oh, that name, people said, this name is Gajraj. Because Gajraj, when it goes, it doesn't go down once again. And we were all excited. A new type of locomotive was born, 3100 horsepower, but the support we were getting from sheds, we could not blame them because the failures were too high. Kuch aisa ho gaya tha ki haathiyo ko dekh kar atraaf mein hoti thi dhoom gher leta tha unhe ehle tamasha ka hujum. Ye ehle tamasha ka jo hujum tha, those for, those against, was something which is very difficult to describe. There was a lobby against it. There was a lobby in favor. There were people who wanted it to succeed. So those uh, days of reams and reams of papers were filled up to somehow make this locomotive more reliable as to some extent even the production was stopped for some time. And we really had to work hard, all the directors of RDSO and the officers at DLW to convince the people that this is the future of the locomotive. And then Mr. N.C. Sinha happened. So he asked, uh, he asked Mr. Uh, Harish Gupta once. Uh, because the WAP series and WDG series, w, sorry, WAG series, WAG7 particularly, borrowing the bogey design from Hitachi locomotive 6000 horsepower, which had come in by Vishakapatnam, and borrowing the flexi coil design to, to adapt in WAP series was all done by Motor Power Directorate, all done by partly by Mr. Harish Gupta and those before him. Mr. Sinha used to work very hard and used to go in deep of everything. And he asked Mr. Harish Gupta once, as he had settled down, which I can describe it only in the words of Sahir Ludhyanvi. And that was, 
غیروں پہ کرم اپنوں پہ ستم اے جان ففا یہ ظلم نہ کر رہنے دے ابھی تھوڑا سا بھرم اے جان وفا یہ ظلم نہ کر کہ بھائی جب آپ بجلی والوں کے لیے یہ جی اور پی سیریز بناتے ہو تو ڈیزل نے کیا خطا کی ہے سو آئی اونلی ٹیل یو ان شارٹ دیٹس ہاؤ اسٹارٹیڈ دی ڈیزائن آف ڈبلو یوز ٹو کال اٹ ڈبلو ڈی جی ون بیکاز پہلا لوکو تھا and wdp2 because wdp1 all was also being designed at the start and he said ki ye jitna kaam bijli walon kiya hai wo diesel logo pe kyon nahi karte ho aur wo harish gupta sahab apni roz apni pocket book nikal ke roz unse baat karte the ki sahab isko under frame ek 1.5 feet 1.5 meter badha de increase it by 1 meter yahan pe ye fit ho jayega wahan wo fit ho jayega mera bijli wale cheezon ka kaam tha i used to just say what could be placed and so on and with Mr. Uh, N.C. Sinha's vision was born the WDG-1. It had the high adhesion bogey with have the unidirectional traction motors because all of them face in one side. The torque of the motor, the reaction, faces downwards and gives it more weight. And that gives it more adhesion. For the first time, what a wonderful design of the locomotive it was, partly helped due to its being overweight. Declared weight was, uh, if I remember correctly, 123, or was it 120? I think 126, or 123, 20.5 axle load. But actual weight was perhaps higher. That was a big debate about diesel locos. In any case, you have such a heavy engine, unlike electric locos, that they were always overweight. That also helped the addition, but sometimes what happened for the first time was unbelievable. What kind of tractive effort you can transfer from a locomotive depends on mainly two things. Is the adhesion and is the limit of current on your traction motor or your alternator or both of them or rectifier and so on or transformer, whatever. What such a... And in WDM2, between fifth and sixth notch, the adhesion limit reaches, whereas the electrical equipment can take in more current, but the adhesion does not permit. That's why you have limit the tractive effort at 30 tons. In WDG1, in test, you could, this was a locomotive if the track was perfect, you could notch up to notch 8 without slipping. This was the kind of benefit we got from high addition bogey unit directional motor and partly a little bit because of weight. It had a longer platform and It faced similar problems at WD, uh, WDM2C, but traffic loved it. It was an instant success. Later, it was renamed WDG2 for uniformity, I guess. And then later, WDG3A. This 3A business and all that started where 3 WDM2, we thought, denoted 2,000 horsepower. So 3 would, uh, 2,600, of course, but... 2,000 series, 3 would denote 3,000 series and if it was 100 more, then it will be A, 200 more, it will be B and so on. That's how it got redesignated as WDG3A. And its sister, which came in a little later, was again a full-bodied locomotive, the twin cab for the first time. Again, a big handiwork of Mr. Harish Gupta to some extent helped by me, my electrical equipment and so on. Uh, you see the features there, just like we use the high edition bogey here, we use the flexi coil bogey in this one. For the first time, we also made a break from BHEL. Till, till that time, diesels were wedded to BHEL. There was no concept of tendering and getting equipment from anybody else. For the first time, we needed a lighter weight traction motor, other than what was used in WDM2 and WDG2 to keep the weight lower to 19.5 ton axle load, that is 117 tons. And for the first time on diesels, a traction motor made by Crompton Greaves also entered the field. I remember the comment from Mr. Dachrati jokingly okay. once said, I don't like this loco because it looks like a damn electric locomotive. Uh, this was not a great success for many reasons I'll not get into. First of all, traffic did not like it. They never liked the diesel to be a, anything specific. In G, it was fine because it was freight. But they could not play around with this locomotive in its sling. They could not use it in freight. 
So they never, they would have uh, preferred a, a M version of this locomotive. So I guess only 70, 80 of these were made. Uh, but it was a design which gave a lot of confidence to RDSO. This was the second big uh, gift to Indian Railways by Mr. N.C. Sinha and Mr. Harish Gupta. I'll not spend much time on it. Here the bogey was borrowed from WDM3 for branch line working with a 12-cylinder engine, so lower horsepower, with a better, better uh, curving characteristic, so you could, you could go to those branch lines with heavier curves and so on. This also did not take off well. And, uh, one part of the reason was some problem with reliability in the beginning part. Also, because of it being a bobo and we realized, and we again re made that mistake with GM Loco, I'll come to that, but somehow it was not gaining the acceleration we needed. And also, because once again, nobody liked the P locomotive and diesels. In 1986, we had gone for a tender for a 4,000 horsepower locomotive. And for nine, till 1996, it was lying in limbo. It used to rise and go back to its grave once again. Rise again, go back. For 10 years. Some hope had been kindled. Hope because... In diesel fraternity, there was a lot of expectation and therefore heartache. As I say, Shakespeare again, it's not Shakespeare, but quoted uh, apocryphal again. It says, expectation is the root of all heartache. There was big expectation, but always a heartache. And then something happened in 1996. Actually, nothing happened. Jafar Sharif happened. Jafar Sharif had already happened to ABB locomotive. After four or five years, that those locomotives orders were placed in 1992 or something like that. And this was 95 or 96, I think 96. So Mr. Jar Jafar Sharif happened. And then, because Harish Gupta and I were deputed to railway board to write the contract in great detail, sitting with those EMD gentlemen. And we would go and spend in that lousy. Uh, Rail Nema's room, perhaps the whole week and come back for weekend to Lucknow by Lucknow. Mail flights were un unheard of. But what happened was unbelievable when we saw the file, file which was not moving at all for 10 years. Suddenly, one day the file comes alive and then it moves to 23 or 24 tables in matter of 3-4 days. Culminating in the final order, which last noting and then there is a gap of about one and a half months and then the LOA for the locomotive is placed. You can derive your own meaning. But I, I would always describe the situation uh, was akin to what Faz has said, that jo ruke to kohe gara the hum, jo chale to ja se gudar gaye. When we stopped, we were like a heavy mountain, but when we moved, we gave up our life. So that's how the contract was placed. And then the what the quote was of 1986 for an ACDC locomotive. Two years back in North America, or two and a half years back, Burlington Northern had moved to a large fleet for the first time of three-phase AC locomotives built by EMD. So it was quite a current technology. And we said, by humko to this may have AC chahiye. So these EMD gentlemen would laugh at us. But somehow their contract in US was for AC electrics from Siemens and not their own. Siemens had a big presence in India. So, under the tutelage of uh, big wigs like Mr. Dashrati and others, we were able to instigate Siemens, who were a big customer, uh, to, to, uh, who, who were a, uh, who, whose big client was EMD, 
to go and tell them that he indian railways wants ac traction so why are you giving them antiquated 20 years old technology i'll not go into nitty gritty again huge persuasion but believe it or not something which we are not able to do in small contracts today changing the specification of something ordered something ordered was possible in this huge at that time 250 crore contract 200 million dollar contract the specification was changed to gto based inverters and when the locomotives came in 1998 we got a locomotive which was almost current technology with a 4 and 5 years old technology and rather an extensive trial stayed in north america there were uh, some issues which cropped up in this change the in rdso we made the, perhaps a mistake when we draw the uh, vision diagram of the driver these are long locomotives and we forgot that our drivers are used to driving long hoods so there will be no problem but this was a very long locomotive what missed out was in the layout in the layout was a blower which projects outside the hood and it was coming in way of the vision it became a big problem they had to reduce the uh, blower size uh, the concept of continuous power had to be roped in in a, some jugglery where i could see that the locomotive will not really suffer but the level of cooling had to be reduced to some extent because the locomotive the motors have already have temperature sensors which bring down the power in case of the temperature goes above a limit and so on there are only two things which i'll add here was uh, during one of these discussions the emb gentleman would always be very haughty not agreeing to anything and since they were a large corporation perhaps he thought and perhaps he was true i don't know that the gdp of india was perhaps lower than the sales turnover of emd of gm actually general motors and he asked mr dashrathi uh, what is the gdp of india and mr dashrathi replied 1 billion people so the fellow was turned speechless and mr vadhwa samao when he first visited the yellow locomotive that he saw i think in a picture not actually he said it's like mona lisa i have no idea why how this locomotive could be called mona lisa mona lisa as you know is enigmatic all about who's this da vinci's woman but then you know some people actually call hamlet the mona lisa of literature so we will settle it at that and call it the mona lisa of diesel traction in india and later two years later came the wdp4 but we again forgot the lesson that couple of tons on diesel locomotives don't matter nobody measures them so truly but we were so bent upon keeping the axle load within 9.19.5 so that it passes without a problem in high speed test this was a 160 km per hour locomotive by the way so they gave up one motor what is called the classical aa1 wonder it's not really a bobo but it's the same bogey some transom was reduced one traction motor was removed and that's how this wdp4 gentleman arrived in india and very soon the driver's vision now it was in passenger it was even more important it became a big issue and then we used to hear something unthinkable i was adr and when it happened uh, in sikandrabad division he so says of this they used to call it computer loco the computer loco wheel slip between this station to this station when drawing this train i said wheel slip in a passenger train that's unheard of so that was something on my mind to solve before i came again to rdso as edmp and i also did couple more foot plates and actually learned from the driver that whatever the diagram may show but the driver had real difficulty in anticipating there was anticipation unnecessary anticipation of signals and so on there was a vision problem in long hood driving and had something had to be done about it meanwhile learning from these uh, EMD technology. I was I was chief design engineer DLW at that time and had this able lieutenant, well taught, 
by Mr. Harish Gupta called Anil Kumar. And so many features from EMD were adapted in Alco that I, I don't even have a count of that. And there were other improvements which were pi parallelly going on, like microprocessor controls in Alcos, which enabled things like auto, auto low idle. Low idle never worked on diesels because the low idle switch and then the engine used to shut down. Here was enablement, which actually knew the lube oil pressure and based on then decided whether to go to low idle or not. The roof mounted DBR. The REM lot, the microprocessor went to something called, uh, which we started when I was EDMP, not when I was CD, was remote monitoring and management of locomotive and trains, which at the time of going to press, every diesel locomotive was enabled. This All the data of 180 parameter lands in a server. How much it is used and all, how much it is useful to predict, how much it is useful to cut down schedule time, not to do schedules and so on, a separate matter, but the enablement has been there. And all these were combined, were done in WDG 3A and WDM uh, 3A also were some manufactured and other locomotives. But all these were Anil Kumar combined them all in one locomotive and traffic wanted it and made it a mixed locomotive with higher horsepower. One little thing I'll say because now I don't think I have much time, but anyway, uh, we were able to, using the microprocessor, actually not limit ourselves to a throttle, not throttle ourselves to a traction horsepower. But microprocessor processor enabled us to actually know how much auxiliaries were being consumed, what was the temperature, how much the engine could be, uh, could be run at, because the uh, temperature affects the power of the engine, and then decide the optimum traction power. And based on that, because WDM2 traction power is capped at 2250, by reverse calculation, we found that a 3100 horsepower locomotive, which was already upgraded to 3300, could actually deliver 3400 horsepower. And that's why WDM3D, D denoting 400 horsepower. And uh, this locomotive was a mixed success, but a very large number was made. It was liked by traffic because it was a mixed locomotive. We also tried something wonderful where the equalizers, you know, always cause problems. We actually did calculation and actual measurements to see Hi. that with the uh, incorporation of microprocessor and creep control, <laughs> somebody needs to go mute, please. Yeah, so equalizers were removed because of the microprocessor without any loss of addition. So that's what we call WDM 3D with equalizer less bogies. And we also made an end cap type of locomotive, like, like learning from the REMD experience. Only one such locomotive was made, but this was a dream project of Anil Kumar and yours truly. I don't will not go into the reasons why they were not made. Perhaps the stress had gone more on EMD direction, and that's why. Uh, we also were able to upgrade the Alco engine to 3600 horsepower. Five of these were built with G electrics and G engine and modified turbo. A lot of people ask as to why this was not pursued. There's no straight answer, but one of the reasons, of course, was we were entering a territory where it is much cheaper locomotive. Half the price of EMD could actually start threatening the EMD locomotives. So it was not really pursued. There is not one single reason. Somebody said because there were failures. No, that's not correct. There were not that many failures to discontinue manufacture, but it was not pursued. As I am reaching slowly towards the end of my talk, uh, these uh, WDG4 and WDP4 were also made over with a series of modifications and upgrades, all done by DLW and RDSO. And mind you, without much help, or rather no help from EMT. Because it's the same old uh, theory I have, is that transfer of technology is an oxymoron. They transfer you once, you want the next, come back with a contract again after 10 years. A very simple example, while doing a load test of an EMD engine, you do what is called a 13% higher load test, load test 2. Which means that a... 4100 horsepower locomotive engine was actually tested upwards of 4500. 
that means it was possible to make it 4500 but moment we would bring the subject up emd would, would tell you thousand reasons why it should not be then enablement happened you could not do it yourself because there was something called em2000 and em2000 was a black box then something wonderful happened we had our own indigenous acdc system with its own microprocessor you know the manufacturer that was a tremendous enabling feature where we could play with the locomotive we, we wanted because we controlled the locomotive totally now there was no need to get the code because when you take the code of a of a microprocessor control locomotive you're fooling yourself you're not able to modify it so we were able to fool the em2000 and fit siemens igbt upgradation to from gto without the em2000 realizing that it is now feeding to an igbt converter and not a gto converter when we went for this uh, contract which six of them went to siemens and four to emd i was told to write the specification frankly i didn't know much about igbt all i knew about igbt expands to insulated gate bipolar transistor but not much more than that but i knew how to write specification to procure things that started full five years before igbt's came to electric locos they had come to diesel locos and more reliable in 2006 or 7 i think the first igbt locomotive were turned out we went to 4500 rem lot was fitted and so many more improvements you see all these versions all designations are mixed up all these wdg 4a b c d i will not go too much into that wdp 4a b c d and all that but one of the things that you can see that the, instead of the bay window the entire body of the cab was widened to afford a greater wish uh, a much better vision uh, from both from both for both sides to the driver and all these versions you see i will only talk about this one because this was i would call the crowning glory when emd refused that any twin cab locomotive can be made on emd platform in the weight limitations we were talking about i got support from board and anil kumar was the ablest lieutenant available and we were able to design define this look uh, design this locomotive we didn't do an absolute weight calculation which we should have we did a what i call plus minus calculation on existing locomotives and by taking out things and adding little we were able to prove that i am adding only this i am reducing this much weight from existing wdp wdg4 and there it is at the it qualifies at the 19.5 or 20 tons weight limit that we had and a large number of these were made and later also the goods version was also made what was called the wdg4d the passenger was, version was wdp4d and it served railways uh, very well in the years to follow what i call the ultimate project was the 5500 the ultimate project because this was a project taken up in collaboration in design collaboration between emd rdso and dlw is the only time they work together to design a project it's not designed by emd and transferred to indian Bay. And uh, it was 5,500, a 20 cylinder engine fitted in a locomotive. I believe only few numbers were made because uh, it was, uh, uh, whatever be the reason, as far as I, I'm sorry. It was to some extent killed by our own people for some little things here and there. Uh, I had left RDSO and joined a DRM Bangalore, so I don't know the total nitty gritty, but it was a wonderful example of a collaborative design project. It did not really was exploited to its full potential. Perhaps it was coming in way of the G6000 project. Uh, we will leave it at that, but about this locomotive, I don't even know where they run. I will say this much. Again, from a poet, never got the recognition it was due. Shayad yehi thi uski mohabbat ki intiha ki mujko bhi usne chun diya divare ishq. So, yeah, this locomotive became a, became 
ये दीवारें इश्क में चुन दी दिया गया एंड यू नेवर हियर मच अबाउट इट एक्सेप्ट फॉर वट एवर यू आर रनिंग नेवर गॉट अ ग्रेट सर्टिफिकेट टू रन मे बी नाइनटी किलोमीटर्स पर आवर और सो बट द डिजाइन एफर्ट वॉज वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग आउट एंड देन ऑफकोर्स आई थिंक आई हैव कम टू माई लास्ट स्लाइड is you all are all aware the how the 6000 horse power locomotives but uh, this has been a big leap laga de gra and i say just before the great fall in a way you can say that the curtain raised as the curtain falls these locomotives came to india just as diesel traction was going to its demise i would say about this locomotive i have nothing against it it's a beautiful locomotive but beauty alone doesn't matter that much. the technical prowess alone doesn't matter that much because as firak has said na rachav hai na banav hai kisi ahle naz o niyaz mein ki na ishq mein hai wo baak pan na wo kham hai gul se zulf e daraz mein that beauty of this locomotive i miss because there is no blood sweat or tears of railway men in this locomotive this is impersonal it runs as the diesels of indian railways meet their demise in all well that ends well the bard has said ah, crying that's good that's gone our rash faults make trivial price of serious things we have not knowing them until we know their grave oft our displeasures to ourselves unjust destroy our friends and after weep their dust the joy of all these diesels right from if i discount the open line days right from early 90s 1991 to be precise right up 2010 till i was edmt and later keeping in touch with them were absolutely joy soul in doing and something to cherish for life myself and in association with the people i named and also so many others i could not name and about diesels i would only say ki ujale inki yaadon ke hamare saath rehne do na jaane kis ghadi mein in dieselon ki sham ho jaye thank you very much thank you very much sudanshu it was uh, a most interesting talk it tells it it showed me how out of date i am when it comes to diesels i think the last time i worked with a diesel locomotive was perhaps 30 years back anyway time has to go on uh i'm sure there are many questions i saw in the chat there were hundreds of questions but we can perhaps allow a few anyone with a, a question that you would like to put up to mr mani Sir, so, sir, I have a question. Uh, uh, sir, uh, is it possible for somebody to uh, assemble these questions and send to me by mail? I would love to answer. Them. Yeah, I think that will be it. Otherwise, there are there are too many, you know, to answer right now. Yeah, but yeah, whatever we can do now, wonderful. Otherwise, if somebody can send it to me on mail, I would I love to answer. Okay. So, hello, sir. Okay. Oh. And I also have, have a chance. Sure. Can I say something there, Shubhran Shuyer? Yeah. Please go ahead, Shubhran Shu. Uh, Mr. Mani mentioned that WDG five, you know, the dual cab WDG five D. No, sorry, WDG five itself was killed by our own. So I am a witness to that. I was in board at that time, and we had somehow managed to push this design as a collaborative <laughs> effort of EMD and. But EMD spent several man years of efforts, putting in RDSO and DL Blue designing this locomotive for us free of cost. So they obviously expected some, you know, some kind of a remuneration, if not a transfer technology or a technology price. So you now after this was done, the DL Blue said uh, we will buy the equipment on single tender, on open tender. So EMD people came to me in board. Is that that I think that we have spent so much man 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 years, so many man years, 
And what are we getting out of it? I mean, if you want to buy it from open trade, fine. Then why did you promise us? So I spoke to people in DLW, the COS and CME. I won't name them. I said, why don't you buy the equipment from EMD? It's a gentleman's promise made a year ago. I said nothing called GM gentleman's pro promise. It's all tender. It's all public purchase. This that. So finally, I spoke to the AMRS in Railway Board, the stores. Head of stores. <laughs> yeah, this is not. Is it? I told you this is not fair. We have to reward them somehow. I said I want to declare the first ten locomotives as prototypes, for which equipment should be purchased from the OEMs. Which is only fair because you know the new new engine, twenty cylinder engine and traction and alternator and the controllers, everything. So we couldn't have probably managed with a third party supply. So he said, "Go ahead, take my approval and file." And so I communicated to DLW that you should buy, you should treat the first ten locomotives as prototypes, and go ahead and buy from EMD. We were very happy. But then, when they started making, the first locomotive went for oscillation trials and failed beyond 90 kmph. 90 kmph is good enough for freight operation because freight is only 75 kmph. So again, the gentleman, you know, the mechanical gentleman in DLW says, "We will not make any more of these." I said, but you bought equipment for ten locomotives. Over my dead body, he says, uh, I will not make it. I said, the EMD has to answer. I said, EMD doesn't have to answer anything. It's a collaborative design, and we are equally responsible. In any case, the anti camp is good enough for freight. Why don't you just go ahead and make it? He flatly refused. Maybe another one or two were made, uh, and then the remaining seven local sets of equipment just decayed and rotted in DLW stores, and we waste. And thrown away. So that's how some of us, some of our own, damaged the good. If WDG five had come through, maybe would have made some dent in freight operations vis-a-vis -vis electrification. Yeah. So, so Shubhranshu, I would like to add exactly what you're saying. Is the day we, of course, for diesels, the day is over for us. But the day we start treating people, these companies like them, as collaborator. And not assume the role of a dispenser of favors, things would change. Because uh, as I as I as you told, this was a unique project where we sat down and designed together. The learnings we got was tremendous. Of course, I don't know how much use that could be put put to, but very unfortunate. Yes. May I come in, uh, Mr. Malik? Hello. May I have your attention for a minute? Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, well, first of all, I can't make out whether uh, you are uh, uh, you're a poet or you are <laughs> a uh, very little of uh, uh, Sahib Dudwani and um, and uh, Gadi. You were able to dish out, but uh, I was looking forward to hearing something from Shakespeare, except Troilus and Cressida towards the end. So I don't know whether. Whether diesel manufacture and designing uh, uh, does not lend itself to whatever. <laughs> from, uh, I did have some fake fake spears, sir. Couple okay. of fake spears, <laughs> not fake spears. Uh, now, now coming back to something. I mean, I, my my facts, etc., may be totally out of date. Uh, I belong to a generation which was the first user of WDM one imported in India. I happened to be the first person to get onto the foot plate in Chakradharpur division on the Goa Dangaposi section. And um, that was probably a year before the Chinese came uh, looking for something within India in 1962. So I get back to that era uh, after having been able to see how the garrets function, how the, how the steam locomotive power guzzling uh, things without, uh, and then unfortunately, without having had the pleasure of tasting an omelet or a cup of tea on the foot plate. Um, uh, now, uh, then you talked in terms of the WDM2, which were the workhorse, as you put it, for Indian. Yes, again, a couple of WDM2s uh, hel helping us on the KK line, for instance, and I having done the foot plate right from. Voltaire to Kirandul and back without break. Uh, then WDM4, uh, you said the, 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 the speed locomotive 
used for Rajdhanis. Again, had the pleasure of doing the foot plate from Howrah to Delhi. And um, now, with all this, the question arises that when we have done a tremendous amount of work and our GDP was one billion people, uh, how is it that our mysteries have kuch bhi anveshan, anusadhan, adi ke liye, kshetra mein koi vishesh, as far as my knowledge goes, uh, nothing very much spectacular to design, in spite of tremendous amount of effort and contribution by extremely competent people, as you explained. Uh, how is it that we were not able to really turn out something, a product of our own, in spite of our size, in spite of our capacity, and uh, we depended on and then and another question which looms large in my mind is that when you are now developing G high high power locomotive, what are you going to do with them when you are thinking in terms of hundred percent electrification? So your story about development of diesel stops here, but where exactly do we take it forward to? Thank you. So I'll start with the with, with what you said in the end. Uh, so that's, uh, of course, the obvious explanation is that it's a, it's a 10-year contract. And when the contract was entered, it was not uh, the any kind of quick uh, demise of diesel locos was not envisaged. And uh, the minister who went for uh, this large sale electrification did announce that this contract will be abolished. Uh, it created some kind of a problem with obviously with GE and I don't know what all it transpired, but uh, of, of that could not be done. So that's one reason straight away that you entered into a contract for 10 years there with, without any exit clause, which could be to satisfaction of both the parties. And that's why you still make them be, make those diesels. Uh, more than that, I'll not be able to say more, sir. As far as uh, when you say a totally indigenous product over, in spite of the learning since early 1950s to uh, 2010s, why it could not be done. The, one of the reasons uh, it could not be done to my mind is uh, there are two, two very essential parts of a locomotive or a diesel locomotive, which, which, uh, which you must design yourself to be a true designer of a locomotive. One is the engine itself and then the bogies. So while in bogies we were able to do a little bit of modifications here and there and we made these uh, high adhesion and high speed bogies, no bogie has been designed in ab in issue in India except for train 18 and that too with help of consultants. So yes, you are right. Unless we do, we will not reach there. So I would say that in, in respect of design of bogies, the first initiative took place in case of train 18. We have never really designed a bogey. I have been issue. As for engine, of course, we are far uh, away from designing an engine. Designing an engine, I can only say, is, uh, is something which is done by very few companies or very few countries. And we were only able to tinker with the locomotive to, it, uh, to with the engine to improve its efficiencies and so on. Try it out with very turbochargers. Even that is a big enough exercise for designing an engine. De novo is not something we have really not reached there. Even in India, if you talk about this, uh, designing a new engine, uh, I know the instances of the Tata Indica and Indigo engines, which were designed in collaboration with some firms in Europe. Uh, the Kaveri engine story, you would know, of the RDO. Uh, they, of course, advanced far more than we did, but the level of expertise available in Indian railways and the kind of setup we have of people who go for design for five years and so on uh, uh, without any dedicated design effort is not something we are going to reach. In any case, diesels are history, but uh, we are not going to reach there through the kind of setup we have today. So, in a way, you are very right, sir. A purely Indian design, 
in spite of all those years was not there but still we feel that we we were able to do a good job in tinkering with the designs and making products suited for our condition and last thing as uh, somebody mentioned and i also mentioned in my talk we should not forget the importance of these mystery giri of our uh, mysteries so to say and engineers which actually made the alcos made by dlw more reliable than efds and i'm told this is another dangerous ground because it's a contract more reliable mind you with the g locos which are running in india today right may i now request mr prakash tendulkar to ask his question mr tendulkar kindly unmute yourself and ask your question please unmute yourself uh he is not able to hear it seems because uh, he he is trying I, to unmute unmute himself i will i can i take one minute meanwhile because i especially had requested those people i named to be present mm -hmm. i see only mr joshi but can we ask mr joshi to speak uh, yeah speak, mr joshi uh, please, please please comment or ask a uh, or uh, question yeah i i thank you uh, sir i am not asking any question i want to narrate a uh, my own experience of working on wdm once in patrapu there were only two sheds where wdm once were based patrapu and voltaire so i tell you a story which i think a modification on locomotive which has been rarely tried these locos as you know are uh, could drive only on one side they were used as bankers between patrapu and tori for the goods loads when there is a upgradient of one in 100 sometimes one in 80 a few stretches so when they used to come back sometimes it used to be nose forward and while returning they used to just consume time because the running was like a tender foremost in a steam locomotive so the restriction was 10 kmph so my cme was mr mk khosla khosla maharaj kumar khosla he got to know this problem from cobs that this is what is happening and these locos take enormous time he came to shed and he said joshi i want these locos to be made into twin cab my god i said i was i was in my cab how can i do something so we worked on that design and i realized that no, uh, i'm there be, now i'll ask a question could be done by duplicating a cab there was a huge balance weight on one side of four or five tons we had to cut that out we made two locomotives we did convert and we ran the pipes all the way from front to the back and we ran uh, we had all the wires running from the front panel to the back panel and there we fitted the reverser and all the controls and lo the loco started working but it had such a huge vibrations because the no other technical aspects were looked into just you know convert say the, say the word convert and you have converted but it was not a success those locomotives could be run in the reverse direction well because driver had a cab uh, some some kind of a vertical cab and uh, but due to vibrations we said this should not be tried on more locomotives but this experiment came to haunt me when i was deputed to bangladesh meter gauge locomotives bangladesh wanted twin cab meter gauge no there was no design they came to patratu copied our design and went i said they would at least be intelligent enough to understand that there is no need to run the pipes all the way from front to the back you can drill from the floor and take all the air pipe connections from below so that such long pipes running 20 feet on the cab is not required i went and to my horror i found all they had done was copy wdm one design so it was a total and bangladesh was another uh, you know story which i don't want to share and uh, say anything but wdm one few locomotives were modified to run both ways and it was a horror story to say the least okay thank you mr joshi about Jashi. the legal history uh, mr tendulkar can you unmute again and try and ask your question
You have to unmute yourself. You are muted. We can't hear you, Mr. We can't hear you because you are muted. I spoke with him just now. This has been muted by the admin, it seems. Centrally. But he'll have to unmute himself again. Apoorva, your question? Is on behalf of all the rail fans, uh, Mani sir and Joshi sir, are you the father of the Jumbo? Low, uh, the low... Uh, no, 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 no. I'd say, yeah. Aapne, so, yeah photo laga hai usme. Yeah, haan, photo mele laga hai. Jumbo was, uh, I think, the GM DLW, Mr. Uh, Jaira. Okay. The Jumbo name was given by rail fans. For yes. the, we used to call it New Look. Uh, okay. Or we, I suffered that locomotive quite a lot in Bardwal. It's called DBR Jal Jata. Okay. So, be, because the DBR was the one which came under the axe with some kind of modification. Yes. So, it was discontinued because of that problem. Later on, of course, the as you know, EMD roof mounted DBR was adapted. So, Jumbo was done much before... Uh, uh, I came into the. I was. Uh, I was in the field. Oh, okay, uh, Mr. Tendulkar, your question. Yes. You are now unmuted. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. We yes. Can. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, Money WDM three F was basically yes. using a lot of G electronics, that is a microprocessor, and even they had a G traction motor. Yes. Which Bhel uh, initially could not manufacture, but they did it later on eventually, or I don't know. It was a good locomotive with 3600 horsepower. So why DLW made only six copies and not any more? Yeah. Uh, so one of the reasons was that the stress by that time had, this was around 2000, if I'm correct, 2010, 2011. And a decision to switch over completely to EMDs was taken. Much unlike uh, what was happened to LHB, which happened only in 2017, Mr. R.K. Rao was MM and in one meeting we decided that this Alco EMD business will continue. So if you really want to further the EMD locomotives, you must stop making Alcos. I mean, when that decision was taken, uh, 3600, 3300, 3100 and all that was not in question. What was uh, behind that thinking was where we have brought this technology, so we should go whole hog for it. So if I was there, I would, I would agree with you. There was no harm in making some of these more locomotives, even as you went full hog for EMD. But somehow this became a victim of... Uh, the decision to switch over totally to EMD locomotives. Uh, perhaps Shubranshu can add a little more if my memory is not serving right. I would I would think this was the reason. Regarding what's I, I just missed the last few. The 3600 HP, five, six of them were made, but I'm saying it was discontinued because there was a decision to go whole hog for EMD and this could have been a pinprick in that decision. And DLW actually shifted completely to EMD is somewhere around 2010, if I'm not wrong, or 2009. And this was locomotive, five copies, as you say, six copies were made and yeah. Alcos were discontinued. So that value was, this was one of the reasons. We could have perhaps continued with some of them. And as a mixed uh, local... Also, 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 the electrics were very expensive from Right. Okay, last two questions. Redmi, can you identify yourself and ask a question? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, sir. Actually, I'm Vivek a Kumar, please from... mute yourself. Mr. Vivek Kumar, please. Yeah, please. Redmi, can you first yeah. name yourself and then ask the question? Hello, sir. I am Nilav Burman. I am a student of Assam Engineering College. So basically, sir, I am I have been fascinated by railways. I have in, in fact have a page and I have collected photos of all these rail fans. You can say I have done some journeys also. 
so my question is that like uh, since you know that it railway is going for 100% electrification right so there was also some projects that they were combining uh, electric e locos and d locos together there is i think one loco which was like wdap5 or something like this so so can you tell me where is railways planning on this diesel and electric combination well if you are asking me uh, this has been i was in berlin when this started so must have been around 2012 that it started i am not sure but perhaps one locomotive has been built i i am not that correct but any project which takes 8 years uh, is a dud project in any case because that sincerity of purpose in designing it was not there i would simply say that if, if there was a market for dual traction locomotive it should have been done very quickly this is not how things are done i would only simply say that and now that the that the decision has been taken for 100% electrification uh, dual traction doesn't make sense so so the, i hope i answer your question first of all first you delay the project in some uh, whatever idiotic things and then then uh, the time has come now hardly it, it won't be justified because of such large scale electrification Uh, Mr. Mathur sir, I, I forgot to mention Srinivas, who was also a comrade in arms. He is PCME ICF now. I saw him. I would request you to give him two minutes if he can, uh, if he can uh, say something about diesels with your permission. Okay. Before we ask Mr. Srinivas, in the last question or or comment from Joydeep Datta. Sir, can I take you back to Bardhavan? Oh yeah, please sure. So I wanted to know, as a young boy from NJP during those days, I used to always see those jumbos or low voltage locos to be attached yeah. to Darjeeling Mail. Why yeah. it was so? Because Darjeeling Mail being such an important train, so the drivers used to complain. Ah, uh, they didn't like it because no. in the short road driving, they had to, it... to really stand up like in little yeah. loco and see when it was coming short road. Something like electric. They were used to sitting. and this was more like an electric loco front uh so wonderful question because uh, darjeeling mail was one of the most important trains bardwan shed used to cater to and uh, uh so anirban datta perhaps the ami i talked to about his i didn't see him if he was there he would perhaps been able to answer it but i am not able to give any particular reason as to why that was so uh no because we didn't even like that loco much it used to have frequent failures of dbr and uh, so i have to disappoint you i wouldn't remember why it was so okay, okay. mr srinivas can you can, is it the same srinivas in bangalore sbc i uh, know the mr srinivas bangalore is a great rail enthusiast but i am mm-hmm. talking about mr srinivas who pcme icf i saw him if he is there or maybe he's walked away so we miss him Yeah, I think he must have walked away. I don't. I think uh, he's not there. He's not, sir. No. Right then, th- thank you very much for a most. Can we can we do a clap, sir, for this? Yeah, we can clap. Talk. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, thank thank, so thank you for a wonderful talk. Um, um, it's been most interesting, and I think the rail enthusiasts have really enjoyed it. Um, uh, for a f- formal vote of thanks, may I request Jail Singh to kindly say a few words. i have nothing really to add if you see the number of comments and the length of this talk it is a i'll give you a few statistics this is the longest talk we have had in all our monthly talks uh, this is the largest number of participants we have had when we compare to any of our talks so if, with these two items i'm sure you will appreciate the kind of talk we have had today Thank i'll you. only add one thing uh, in the chat i've given uh, a telephone number i'm sure there are many questions if you have any question yeah. please send it to that uh, number on a whatsapp and we will convey it to mr mani and give you an answer yes we we'll do that i think we would like to end i'll so if you look at the chat i've given my i've given my telephone number in that so send a whatsapp there and we will convey it to mr mani right i'd like so to thank, thank very mr mani once again and all all the participants for being patient and sitting with us for more than an hour and a half in in this particular session and look forward to meeting you at our next monthly talk in april so thank you thank very you much i'm 
I am ending the I am ending the meeting. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye. Have a great Thank day. You. Bye.